Uh, and that's how Detroit tied the game. So I think they're probably going to ride the hot hand unless he tells them, hey, I'm just completely gassed out here. I think they're going to go with him. Uh, I would be surprised if we see Jari again in the regular season, believe it or not. Yeah, but these are playoff games here coming up, essentially. I mean, you got to win. Um, I, I don't even, I don't know Washington's schedule off the top. I looked at it, but I forget who they're playing, um, how tough are their games. Uh, the Red Wings are pretty much out of it now, so it's basically a race between the Caps and the Pens for that final wild card spot. Uh, and potentially, I think that the Penguins have a chance to get third place in the division, but more than likely, they would be the wild card team. They've got a chance at third place. The Islanders, I didn't even check before I came on the air. I know uh, it was 2-2 in that game late into the third period, Richie. Uh, I didn't see what happened with them and with the Canadiens. Uh, but, yeah, if they can get to within a point of the Islanders, then they would have a chance to leapfrog them in the final game of the season. Uh, but you're right. These are playoff games. Uh, I think they're going to treat them as such. Unless the wheels look like they're really falling off the Delkovich, I think they're going to keep going with him. And I think, I think we all know, we've all watched enough hockey – to understand what the difference is between a goalie having a bad game, giving up really soft goals, and a goalie, again, being let down by his, the team in front of him. Even the goal that gets scored where it kind of looks like a Petrie's goal, mm -hmm. and it looks like, how do you get beat by that? Pedersen's in no man's land, not blocking the shot, not taking a body out in front of the net, and just half screening his goaltender. Like, you could call that the weakest one of the bunch, but... It really wasn't even that because his own defenseman wasn't doing his job. So the Islanders won 3-2 in overtime. So they get uh, two points there. They're still three points ahead of the Penguins. It's going to be tough with three games left. Um, and the Penguins have a couple, you know, have tough games. What do they have? They have uh, Boston, Boston, Nashville, Nashville and, the Islanders. and then the Islanders. And then the Capitals have the Lightning, Bruins, and Flyers. I mean, all tough games, really, for both teams. Uh, but the Penguins, they both could go 2-1. and one. But remember, hey, the Penguins were in pole position last year, and they had the two worst teams they were facing. They ended up blowing it. Well, I think last year's Penguins embarrassed themselves. That much is obvious with the way they handled that Blackhawks game. This team is playing much better and is going to be playing better opponents, and I, I would doubt will play down to them. I, I guess now that I'm thinking about it, it is interesting to, to see, or it's going to be interesting to see, if they think Nadelkovich could just use a rest and they take a calculated risk. I haven't looked at the actual dates for those games on the schedule, but if they have any kind of grace period where they know what one of the teams that's around them in the standings did and then they can make a decision uh, on who they're going to start in net based on that, like if they have any wiggle room because another team lost, yeah. I think you could see them do that. But that would be the only way I'd consider handling it that would involve pulling the Delkovich and putting Jari in for a game. So right now, if the, if the playoffs end and, and, you know, they are the second wildcard team, and it looks like they would play in New York to start uh, the playoffs. I, I, it's a tough matchup for the Penguins, I think. I like that matchup Do for you? them. I like it a lot better than them getting Boston. Yeah, I think Boston offers them very little chance, but New York has been a little bit better in some of the underlying metrics since the trade deadline, but... The Rangers, in general, uh, are very reliant on Shesterkin being phenomenal. Uh, I think they would need to get a team that, that played ultra sloppy hockey. And this game, aside from the Penguins, I think they've been a little bit better in that department. They could absolutely, the Rangers, uh, get beat if they see the Penguins in the first round. And Shesterkin is merely a, an NHL average or slightly above average goalie. I mean, they are, they are very reliant on him to carry them through stretches where they play a little bit sloppy. If it's the Penguins and the Bruins, I feel the exact opposite. That's over in four or five yeah. games. But I absolutely think this team could give the Rangers fits, Richie. Do you have any hope, before we go to break here, any hope that this team could make a run? I mean, say they get past the Rangers. Say they get in the playoffs, think, they get past the Rangers. I mean, you still would have Carolina Stranger things have, yeah, or the Islanders. Quickly, I would just say, yeah, as a quick general rule in hockey, I would just say you see teams ride a hot goaltender all the way to the Stanley Cup final. The Panthers only got in last year because the Penguins biffed it at the end of the year, and they ended up in the Cup final. So, yeah, any team that gets in can absolutely make a run, but the Penguins are still incredibly reliant on their top two lines. They have no power play to speak of, and their defense core makes you want to cover their eyes yeah. sometimes. Uh, so it would be all based on hot goaltender syndrome if they did make a but run. But that's what you want with guys like Chris Letang and Eric Carlson. You got to kind of live Carlson with Carlson was terrible yeah, tonight, though. Got, like you Carlson you scores live with the winner, that. but he was an atrocity. Yeah. But you don't have to live with that, though. You should be able to tell a future Hall of Famer, <laughs> don't pinch Play defense. when you're up 5-4. Yeah. Right, we Don't take follow a, break. a guy behind the net when, when your defense partner's already handling it. 
We had to take a break. Back with your phone calls coming up next. All right, it was a big night for Sidney Crosby. He had a goal and a couple assists, which moved him to 1,591 points, 10th all-time in the NHL. Big milestone for Crosby. And I was just reading a tweet from Bob Grove. Sid has assisted on goals by 108 players. Most goals on Sid assists is obviously Malkin, but that's incredible. 108 different players, 1,591 points for Sidney Crosby. 1,000 assists, too, was the other uh, milestone tonight. So he gets assist number 1,000. He's all the way up there in the point race. He is, I keep trying to tell my, I was making a joke on Twitter, Richie. I'll try to explain watching Crosby this way. I was making a joke saying, when you're watching a hockey game, at times, if you're not good at skating, it occurs to you, oh, wait, they're doing all this stuff while they're also skating on ice. And it just kind of blows your mind when you think about it. And then you look at the way Crosby has played the game for essentially his entire career, how there's always been little tweaks and things he's worked on, but the functional player you're watching out there has been the same since age 18. And I, I think this is the case, and I hope it's the case, that people realize you, are, you might see great players again come through here someday. You are probably never going to see one as metronomically consistent as Sidney Crosby has been. For as great as Lemieux was, and Lemieux's the greatest player I've ever seen play the sport, period, uh, I don't think anybody has been as consistent, as doggedly the same as Sidney Crosby has been for basically 20 years now. It's yeah, incredible. It's, I, I'm amazed by what he can do on skates. I mean, I can roller skate, I can roller blade, but for some reason I can't skate, ice skate. It, I, I, it's almost impossible for me. Uh, so it amazes me with all, what all these guys can do on skates. Let's go out to Kevin and McKee's Rocks. How you doing, Kevin? Hey, guys. How you doing today? Good. Um, just two quick questions. First one is, don't you think we should rest our goalie just for one game, just for reasons of being fresh? And second one is, do you think um, giving the Red Wings a point is going to hurt us in the long run? Yeah, I don't think giving the Red Wings a point, I mean, maybe it could hurt, but right now they have the tiebreaker, Chris. Um, you know, I don't, I don't want to give them a break because you have a Saturday game, a Monday game, and a Wednesday game. And if you give them a break and you're going to trust Tristan Jari, uh, I, I feel like these next three games are playoff games for the Penguins unless they can win Saturday and get maybe a three-point lead and then maybe you think about it. You have, to, you have to handle him, I think, based on hoping that, yeah, you get some sort of a cushion against other teams and that essentially one of your last two games, really the Nashville game, doesn't matter. Uh, that is your best chance, I think, if you're the Penguins. As far as the other point from Kevin there about giving the Red Wings a point, does it hurt? I know this, the Penguins' playoff chances after the game went final tonight were about 56%. The Red Wings were down at 17%. The one point you did give them just kind of gives them a slight bit of life and gives you less wiggle room. But I think as far as playing Jari, you have to play it by ear and figure out if you can actually just go away for, from Nedeljkovic for a game, potentially guilt-free, that, that a loss wouldn't matter or wouldn't necessarily hurt you. But even as I say that out loud, Richie, I would then quickly say if you realize because other teams lose that you have a chance to pounce and seal the deal, yeah. you're going to play Nedeljkovic because he's been the goalie you've been riding for this entire hot streak. So even as I say that, it kind of sounds ridiculous. So the only way this works, Chris, is the Penguins play Saturday, Monday, Wednesday. The Capitals play Saturday, Monday, Tuesday. So I guess you could rest him. You might have it clinched Tuesday night. If you, clinch it, if you clinch it somehow and you're in – and your, your position is absolutely set after your game, after the Capitals game on Tuesday, then, yeah, I don't care. Rest everybody. Yeah. Bring up the entire ECHL <laughs> affiliate if you want, if you're, if you're set in stone there. But that's really the only way you can afford to do it unless you're an observer out there who just really thinks the guy is tiring and just needs a break anyway and that a fresh goalie, even though it's Jari at this point, uh, would be a better option. But you're also dealing with uh, Washington. You're also dealing with Detroit and Philly, who are only a, a point back. And I think that last well, game against the Philly's Capitals. Philly's game's in hand. But that last yeah, game but, against but the Capitals Philly's, is against the, Philly, the Flyers. So I understand that, but their game's in hand situation makes me worry a lot less about them. And the fact that I, Philly has been just miserable of late. The fact yeah. that they have, I think, only two games remaining and the Penguins and every other team has a game in hand three. on them yeah. makes me not think about them as much. All right, let's go out to Mike in Newcastle. How are you doing, Mike? Rich, how are you doing tonight? Good, thanks for calling. Uh, yeah, 
I think uh, the Penguins are going to get three points in their next three games. I think they win one of these games, lose in regulation, lose in overtime. And I think at least one other team is going to get 89 points, So I or even two other teams. So I think very well you could have a, a tiebreaker to put it in. But I was saying for weeks ago, I think 90 points was going to get you a spot. And, yeah. You know, it's just one of them times. What do you think, and Mike, two more points would get them nine. I mean, two more wins would get them 90 points, um, right? And that would get them. I mean, if you're saying 90 points get you in, and I think 90 points would get you in too. I think they they desperately need to get four. Then they need to get four the next six possible points somehow. Yeah, I mean, I think. Well, I'm trying to think and do the math in my head here, Richie. I think five of the next six points uh, does get them in because it puts them at 91, and nobody else that's chasing them can get more than 91. So, yeah, five is the magic number. But we're yeah. still, we're still asking a lot out of a team to continue to go 2-0 and one. That would mean they'd end the season on a 9-0 and four stretch. Against playoff which, teams too, hey, Chris. I mean, against playoff. No, teams. I know. I'm, no, I know. I mean, they've been playing playoff-style hockey and playoff-level uh, stakes games for a while. This was functionally a Game 7 of a series that they played tonight, even though it didn't resemble it in terms of intensity for a while. But, yeah, I mean, they, they've, been, they've been pretty sharp, and they got pretty lucky tonight when they weren't sharp. So I certainly wouldn't rule out that they would go 2-0-1-1 or maybe even 3-0. and Who knows? That's got to Dave in Cecil Township. How you doing, Dave? Good. Thank you very much for taking my call. It's frustrating to see how anemic the uh, the uh, power play is going for the uh, Penguins, but it was nice to see Carter get that shorthanded goal because you can get half of the Hey, the power that. play has been an issue all season long with this team, and I, I still don't understand why. I mean, you got all that talent, um, and they just have struggled all year. I can tell you why, Richie. They don't have defined, good defined roles in a sense of just put the puck on the net. Times where, the times where the power play has briefly flickered to life They've all had kind of the same connective tissue. The Penguins have just eschewed the pretty play, and they have said, we're going to make the simple play. We're going to try to tip pucks when they're on the way in. We're going to try to get good looks with some screens from the point for guys like Carlson and Latang to bomb, you know, go bombs away here. Uh, bunting, playing this bumper role, has made them a little bit better, I think, at moving the puck. But for all their talent, they are just way too indecisive and way too much as a collective in pursuit of a pretty play when... We see lesser talented power plays move the puck more crisply, more decisively, with more of a purpose, and know exactly what they're trying to do. The Penguins seem aimless way too often with the man advantage. All right, one more call here before we take a break. Mark out in Pittsburgh. How you doing, Mark? Hi, I just wanted to say in 1975, the Steelers' defense was great still curtain. O.J. managed to get more than 200 yards against that Almighty still hurt. That's yeah, uh, O.J. Simpson, we didn't mention that. O.J. Simpson passed away at the age of 76 here uh, today. You know, I, I think that's, uh, I mean, the one thing, I re obviously the one thing you remember about O.J. Simpson is, is that car chase. And I remember that day. I think everyone, that's one of those days everyone remembers. I was coming back from a baseball game. Um, you know, it was what I, I forget the exact day, 1994, June, June 17, 1994, yeah. Richie, so, very easy to remember because my little sister was born the next day. Yeah, I, I, I came back from a baseball game and we were all watching the car chase in my game room. All right. Um, we had to take a break back with more of your phone calls coming up next.